some time for another book. I know it's been a while. I've been working my way through a couple of books, and I'm actually going to be adding a second video today, um, you know, talking about another book called Rejection Proof. But for now, we're going to talk about a book called Chemistry by Wiki Wang, and I'm really sorry if I mispronounce your first name. EI always throws me off. Um, so, the average Goodreads rating for this was 3.72. I actually gave it five stars. I really, really enjoyed this book, as I'm going to uh, get into all those reasons why. Um, but I, I really thoroughly enjoyed this book on uh, several different levels. Uh, you may notice I am in my garage again. Um, it's hot out here. It sucks. Um, but it's the only quiet place in my house at the moment, so if I start sweating, you know, please don't be disgusted. It's, you know, it is what it is. It's summer in Florida. Um, so chemistry, I got this book through the Book of the Month Club, and it's a story of this chemistry PhD student who essentially has a nervous breakdown. She's under a lot of pressure from her parents, from her advisors. Um, she feels an extra pressure because um, her boyfriend, you know, really wants to get married, but he's completely surpassing her in his chemistry career. Um, and she has a nervous breakdown and the boyfriend ends up breaking up with her and leaving uh, for a job in Ohio. And this book kind of goes through this journey with her. Um, she takes on a tutoring job and you know, more often than not, she's not really tutoring. She's kind of doing the work for her students and they're talking about other stuff. Um, you know, she talked about one student who like brings her a cheese plate. So they sit there and eat the cheese instead. And, um, you know, they talk about, uh, like clouds and stuff like that. Um, but at the end you find out that her students really appreciated her and really, you know, continue to think about her in a positive way um you know and it looks at it it looks at her story from a couple of different angles um which we'll kind of get into so it's a very disjointed writing style which threw me off initially and like on some level i can never completely understand how people get it to work but they do like you know you'll have a snippet here you'll have a snippet there you'll have a longer passage here and then it's just kind of like um i guess kind of like if you're just randomly peering in at different periods of the day or if they're randomly coming to the computer and jotting down in an online journal and then walking away that's what it kind of feels like and again you know i never completely understand how people get it to work but it works. It works really well. And I feel like it works a lot better for this particular character than if they had just done a continuous narrative with chapters and different things. Um, so I, I did end up enjoying that writing style. Um, again, I have my notes. So her writing style, it's very matter of fact. It's very dry. Um, there's a lot of science humor in there. And I see a lot of myself in this character and in this author's writing style because my mom, one, she used to say that I spoke English uh, like a like a non-native, like a foreigner. It was like, thanks, mom. Um, but I also, I tend to have a very dry sense of humor and I, you know, I can be deadpan and delivering punchlines and... Um, you know, people find me hilarious. Like I had a nurse in Korea who could not understand why I didn't go to Hollywood to be a comedian. Um, so, you know, I see a lot of myself in this author and the way she, you know, says things and writes things and, you know, tries to get her point across. Um, and I wrote down some of my favorite excerpts because like, I don't know if you can see this very well. But there are a lot of pages that I dog-eared at the bottom for later um, later discussion and consideration. And I found myself dog-earing a lot of pages because it was just so funny. Um, like this one, genetics aside, I don't see myself having kids. Not one, Eric asks. If I had one, I would want to have two. And if I had two, I would want to have zero. And I think parents out there can really sympathize, like 
for me especially there are days I have two kids and there are days where I'm just like oh my god like what why did I do this like I should have stopped at one or I should have had none just because you know they're climbing on the couch or climbing up the walls and this oh my gosh um let me see okay and I love that she includes Doctor Who quotes in here just saying um okay uh oh okay so this next one is, I really enjoyed this. A Chinese proverb predicts that for every man with a great skull, there is a woman with great beauty. In ancient China, there are four great beauties. The first is so beautiful that when fish see her, they forget how to swim and sink. The second so beautiful, the birds forget how to fly and fall. The third so beautiful that the moon refuses to shine. The fourth so beautiful that flowers refuse to bloom. I find it interesting how often beauty is shown to make the others around it feel worse. Um... So I, I thought that was a good line, um, you know, and a, and a good characterization. Um, 52. Th this one, this one reminds me of myself. Like, it's almost painful. Um, one thing he says, if you could be an emotion, it would be spite. One thing I say, if you could be an animal, it would be a sloth. But I only say that out of spite. <laughs> like, I see myself so much in that. They're like, yes, 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 and yes. Um, so besides the the humor um, that I enjoy, I really, I really empathized a lot with, um, you know, she's a scientist, she's a female scientist. Um, you know, she ends up having a nervous breakdown. She ends up looking at science through this lens of, you know, and she says at one point, like, yes, you can be a woman in science, but only if you have three balls. You know, like, you have to have that extra something to really keep you propelling forward and really keep you, um, you know, help you succeed as a woman. And, you know, there's one instance she talks about in the book where there's a female PhD and she's under a lot of pressure. They say, you know, if you don't get results within a certain amount of time, like, you know, you're going to be discontinued here. And she's ended up, she ends up being busted for, um, for faking results. So it's, you know, and I see a lot of myself with science because I do have a science background and I have had to take a sabbatical from it, um, you know, from the direct work of it, um, for personal reasons, for mental health reasons. So, you know, the fact that she has a nervous breakdown, I see a lot of myself in this book and I can empathize a lot, almost to the point that it's painful for me to read, um, because I do see a lot of myself in there, but at the same time, again, her sense of humor and her dry delivery really saves it for me and really kind of helped me get through the really painful parts um for instance page 60 um the best friend has sent me a present it is a stuffed doll with yellow yarn for hair and two x's for eyes and a line for her mouth it is called a damn it doll i am to grasp the doll by the legs and whack the stuffing out of it while shouting damn it damn it damn it damn it i try it but the doll has proven to be made of industrial grade stuff i have named it science u m f -er. so just so I don't get blocked on YouTube, I'm not going to say that, but you, you get what I'm saying. But I have named it Science UM Effort. You know, I, I immediately bent that page down because it was like, yes, like I would have named my medicine UM Effort. Um, and it almost made me want to get, get myself a damn it all. So, but, you know, the author herself has a history in chemistry and she went to Harvard I believe uh, uh, yes she earned her undergraduate degree in chemistry and her doctorate in public health and um, you know so it's not like she's making it up it's not like she you know trailed a bunch of people for a couple of days you know in order to get the experience for writing this book like she herself you know went through this journey and you know like I said I identified a lot with the character and it it was almost painful at some points how much I could see myself in this character and what she went through, what I went through. Um, you know, I really identified a lot with it, but the humor really saved it for me and really helped me get through the book. Um, 
competition between spouses. So I do have a lot of friends who are doctors who married other doctors. And, you know, I always kind of wondered about this, um, like that, that competition between spouses. Um, you know, and she describes it page, page 43 or page 42. I wrote down two instances, but I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to, okay, here we go. So, um, a habit that forms from this is that I can ask Eric questions only when he is asleep. And she describes, you know, she waits for him to, um, to fall asleep. She listens for that first snore. Then I part his autumn hair and bring my voice down to a whisper. Please stop just for a little while and let me catch up. How do you expect me to marry you if you never let me catch up? So she really feels the sting of she's not making enough progress. She's not progressing fast enough, you know, between her advisors and, you know, the unspoken uh, kind of competition between her and um, her and her boyfriend. I guess I shouldn't say spouse. It's her boyfriend, um, but he wants to get married you know, this unspoken kind of keeping up with the Joneses, only it's keeping up with your significant other. Um, you know, and that's really, really painful for her. And I also wrote down this other. Um, you know, one of the things she does in this book is that she includes vignettes from history and scientific history, you know, like the people who, you know, um, Alfred Nobel, who started the Nobel Prize, and then the first couple of people who won it. One of the vignettes is she includes two marriages, one that ended well, one which didn't. Um, the first one which didn't end well, Clara and Fitzhaber, um, she is brilliant but reserves. When they get married, he demands that she become, you know, the typical wife. Um, he ends up inventing chlorine, the chlorine gas, um, and when she finds out about it, she shoots herself in the family garden. Whereas the other one is Marie and Pierre Curie, who, um, you know, he demands that her, his wife be recognized for a Nobel Prize because she's the one who really did the work. So you have a good marriage and you have a bad marriage. And again, that speaks to some of her reservations about um, marrying Eric because, you know, you're not letting me catch up. You're so far ahead of me. How am I supposed to marry you? Um, so I thought that was a really, really cool, um, and very well done inclusion. Um, and the last thing is, you know, really parental expectations. You know, her family, her parents are immigrants from China, so she has kind of like the typical immigrant story where, you know, she's expected to pursue the American dream. She's expected to do her absolute best and get to the highest tiers of society and, um, really make it work. Um, you know, the father is, you know, bordering on a genius. The mother was a pharmacist in China and had to give it up when she came over here because of our licensing laws. You know, she doesn't tell the parents that she's living with her boyfriend. She isn't forthcoming with the details of um, being separated from school and leaving her program and all that. Like, because she does feel a lot of that pressure and she doesn't want to let them down. But at the same time, um, there is a certain resentment she feels at that pressure. Um, so, you know, I, my predecessors who came here are like four or five generations before me. So like, I didn't feel that exact pressure. So it was kind of cool and interesting to read about that from that perspective. So a very, it's a relatively short book. It's a really quick read, um, but it's really, really interesting. And she manages to pack it so full of stuff for you to think about while at the same time being very humorous, you know, being very uh, matter of fact, very scientific, you know, including all this, you know, scientific and historical information to really flesh out the story. Um, she did uh, an incredible job with it. You know, like I said, I gave it five stars. Um, I really thoroughly enjoy it. I really highly recommend it. I'm so glad I got it. Um, you know, and I can't, right now, I can't think of any books that I would necessarily compare it to. I feel like it is kind of in a class of its own. Um, and I would be interested in reading more from this author. So, 
Chemistry by Wakey Wang. And again, I am so sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Please let me know in the comments if I'm saying it right. W-E-I-K-E -E, Wang. Um, please let me know how to say this. Um, but, you know, if you read it, let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought of this review. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to see more videos like this. Um, I will be posting another video today. Um, hopefully soon. And until next time, have a good one, guys.